So we're back. I have another video for you today. We are talking about, well, I don't know if you can see it very well. We're talking about this. So hidden away here is my sensor panel. Now we've actually done a video on the sensor panel before. This, this isn't necessarily new, uh, but I want to create uh, a new sensor panel, which is actually um, a gift for somebody. Um, but also, since I did that video, I used um, NZXT Cam in that video to create the sensor panel, but I switched to Ada64, which is much better. I found NZXT Cam very buggy, um, but Ada64 is awesome. Anyway, I want to, one, build a custom screen, and two, show you the basics of how to put together the sensor panel using Ada64. So, let's get into it. So make sure you keep up because this is going to go pretty quickly. Uh, these are all of the items you're going to need. There's a screen on the right and a disassembled photo frame ready to be modified for the screen to go into. Uh, first things first, we're going to just measure the size of the ports on the back here of the screen, ready to make a cutout into the photo frame, which we've just marked off here, a couple of marks, uh, and then out with the trusty scalpel uh, and cut out, just with two cuts, that little notch there. Next up, we've got a vinyl bezel that's going onto the glass. Cutting this out was, uh, was the easy part in terms of measuring it, using the glass and measuring how much we wanted to cover on each edge. The difficult part was sticking it on. It isn't as clean as it looks in this photo, but it'll do. Next up, we're marking out where the screen attaches to the back plate of the photo frame uh, and making some holes to put in these standoffs. The actual screen itself will mount to the stands off with the included screws that came in the back. It'll look something like this. Nice and easy, very simple, and screwed down so it's nice and secure. We now place it onto the back of the photo frame and use, yes, you can see that right, that's Gorilla Tape, uh, to secure this down to the back of the photo frame. Uh, we use a lot of tape, it's very strong, but you can see the ports are completely accessible. And then we have an end result. It looks really good and really clean. Okay, so you'll already see on screen, uh, this is actually a sensor panel that I'd already set up previously for that um, display that we've just put together. But because I'm actually going to be giving that display away, I've got to remake my panel to fit my old screen. So I thought I'd take it as an opportunity to show you guys exactly how to do that. So first things first, when you open up Ada64, you're going to want to uh, go down to your system tray at the bottom. You're going to right click on Ada64 and you want to open Ada64. Uh, when you open it up, if you go to, actually let's close this so I can actually show you. If we go to here, open Ada64, which gives us this panel. What we then do is go to file and preferences and that will open up then a separate preferences display. So let's, uh, let's just pop that to there. Okay, so first things first, you'll see the sensor panel size. So when we fill this out, if we just go into our normal display settings, um, and select monitor two, which is the uh, which is that sensor panel. You can see the resolution that uh, that has been set uh, and its orientation. With my normal monitor, I do this in landscape. With the monitor I've just built, which I showed you in those photographs, uh, it's actually in portrait, but exactly the same principle. So we're 1920 by 1080. So the first thing we're going to want to do is change the sensor size to that. So 1920. Uh, by 1080. Sensor background colour can be chosen here and I go with black. Hit apply. What that's now done is the sensor panel that's on the right here has now extended off the screen uh, to fill that screen size um, of 1920 by 1080. So if we close this off and close this off, uh, we can then move this back on. And that's essentially the panel that we're looking to fill. All of the sensors that I've got set up here are already on there and ready to go. So what we can then do is go back to here again and open up Ada64, which is gonna open up that panel. So let's move this out of the way. Now this becomes a bit of a challenge because of available space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this off the screen uh, just so I can get everything open to begin with uh, and then we will uh, we'll load things back up again. So from here, hit file, hit preferences and again straight away that's going to come up with uh, with the preferences 
window that we saw previously. You can see now everything is exactly how we wanted it to be. Uh, you can also adjust other things like locking the position, locking the panel size, so on and so forth. Okay, so now we're going to edit this panel. Uh, we need to make sure that it fits the screen that I actually use because this was set up for the one in the photographs. We just right click it and go to center, uh, sensor panel mo uh, monitor manager even. Uh, and then this has all of the different bits and pieces that we can see set up on here. So I'm going to remove these gauges. Uh, the screen that I use is a much higher resolution and as a result these are far too small and unfortunately it doesn't do them big enough to fit the screen. So I guess it's a bit of a tip is don't do what I did with your screen and make sure that you don't buy one with too high resolution. Um, otherwise this is a bit more challenging to work with. Anyway, let's get these, uh, let's get these off. So you can see these will all just slowly but surely disappear. Uh, as I remove them all. I'm going to replace these dials at the bottom here with just readouts um, because I do still want those. Um, these ones obviously I can remove because we've actually got the numerical numbers right here. Okay, so let's change that CPU um, temperature. So if we modify that, it'll come up with a screen to allow us to modify it, funnily enough. Uh, and you can see the highest they do is large, which is still too small on the size of the screen. So we're going to change it from a gauge up here uh, to a simple sensor item. And we're going to change it, uh, make sure we're still selected on temperature. Oh, I think I went a bit too far there. There we go, set to temperature. So we can go with CPU, uh, CPU temp, like so. We want it in green because uh, that's kind of our go-to colour and we will increase the font size quite dramatically uh, because of the size of the monitor that we're using and its resolution. So that's kind of put it in there. We will reorganise all of this in a minute. Let's just go back up to the CPU clock here and let's make that a little bit bigger. So we'll modify that and I think we'll go with a generic kind of size of around 42. So that gives us that size. Actually, I think we can go even bigger than that. So you just modify each one until it kind of fits the design that you want. So let's go even more than that. Let's go up to 60. There you go, that's a bit better. Uh, and then with these arrow keys here, you can move where that sits on the center panel by one pixel or five pixels at a time. You can see I'm just moving that in and we can move that up. Uh, and we're just kind of positioning it where it looks the very best. There we go. So. GPU clock will do exactly the same with that. So match the sizes that you see on the previous one. So that's text size of 60. If I jump onto here, hit modify, uh, now we can change that to 60. Now the big difference is that if you were doing this from scratch, rather than modify, all you do is hit new and that would create a new thing. You can choose what type of sensor it is uh, and what sort of design it is. So we're just gonna bump this up. So same as before, we can move it by pixel amounts here. I want to move this closer up to uh, to the other readout. And we'll just pull that across and a little bit more and get those lined up like so. Uh, what you can also do is under the modify screen, you can see this is a X position 40, uh, 47. I can move it within here to 47 so it's perfectly lined up. Hit OK and that's those two readings lined up perfectly. Let's do the use memory. So onto here again double click, that gives us this. We're going to hit 60 for the size. We'll move this in to 47. Uh, and then straight away that's going to be lined up with that, but we do need to move it up because um, obviously there's quite a big gap there. Okay. And there we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to work through all of the other sensor items that are on here to get them to exactly how I want them. And I'll be back with you.
Okay, so there we go. That is the completed panel uh, to go back onto my screen. You can see we've got CPU, uh, CPU clock, GPU clock, uh, how much memory is currently being used, current CPU temperature, current GPU temperature, the AIO pump to make sure that's all spinning well, uh, the GPU fans which do go to dormant when they're not under load, so it shows those, case fan speed, uh, and then GPU TDP, so how much of its power limit is being used. Uh, we've got CPU utilization, GPU utilization, utilization and RAM utilization and finally time and we've got my face up here as well so that is the completed panel uh, to utilize it on my screen you can see it takes a little bit of trial and error to get this right um, so don't be put off it's just about trying to find the right way to organize it to suit your design and your specific setup um, but the outcome results are pretty cool and you can always always have a good play with it to try and get it exactly how you want it so there you have it. Uh, one, we've put together a sensor panel in terms of the physical sensor panel, and I've showed you how to do it through ADA64 in very basic, simple terms. This is the outcome of what you saw me building. So it's basically a black photo frame with a seven inch display in portrait as opposed to landscape in this one. Very crudely gaffer taped to the rear of here using Gorilla Tape. Um, Gorilla Tape, Gaffer Tape, are they two different brands? Oh well, doesn't matter. Anyway, we've got access here at the bottom to the HDMI port as well as power over USB. And like I said, it's set up in a portrait setup. It worked really, really well. I actually cut, as you saw in the, uh, in the footage, I cut some vinyl to go around the outside and create a bezel. So we didn't get any light leakage from the screen that's in there. But anyway, I'm super happy with that. Pop that together in a really short period of time and it works really, really well. If you've got any questions at all about what you've seen in this video, stick it in the comment section below. I know it was a bit of a quick one, but hopefully it shows you how you can do just what I've done here today. Not only that, the price of these screens is massively coming down, which is kind of what encouraged me to do a second video about a sensor panel. Um, I've stick some, I'm going to stick some links to different screens uh, down in the video description. They are paid links uh, through Amazon, so I do get a kickback if you do buy anything through them. But if you want to support the channel, it's a great way to do it, especially if you're planning to actually build something like this. Uh, other than that, you can head on over to that randomgeekyguy.com, pick up a Founder Edition t-shirt, which also massively supports the channel uh, and allows me to do stuff just like this. So thank you very much for tuning in again. Like I said, questions below, thumbs up if you like it thumbs down if you dislike it, whatever that might be. And until the next video, I shall see you then.